This is one of the best plants and remedies to use anytime you have a sprain, strain, muscle issue, or broken bones. And this is comfrey. So comfrey is a amazing plant. It can be grown for a lot of different reasons. We're gonna be using this medicinally today, but I actually have comfrey growing underneath my fruit trees here as part as a, of a fruit tree guild. They actually can have a great benefit as a companion plant to other plants. So we'll link to that video if you wanna learn more about using this with your plants and creating a fruit tree guild. But today I actually need to make a medicinal we're gonna be doing a comfrey poultice. And that is because my daughter hurt her ankle um, pretty bad actually just two nights ago. So I'm gonna be harvesting the flower and the stems and we're gonna be taking about the top third of the plant here. I'll go ahead and take that one. And the great thing is this will just continue to spread, hey, it's not for you. You didn't get hurt. The great thing is this will send up a lot more stocks with flowers and leaves and produce more all throughout the season. So we're gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna grab just a couple more leaves off of the other plant that I have there. And then we're gonna head in the house and I'm gonna show you how to make an amazing comfrey poultice and where, why, and when you wanna use this. So I am going to be making this comfrey compress up so that I have it on hand when my daughter gets home. Two nights ago, we were playing volleyball in the front yard and she went to dive after the ball, which she will tell you is completely my fault that she got hurt because I'm the one that hit the ball that she had to dive for it. <laughs> and she stepped in a hole and you, we could see that her ankle was starting to roll. It was almost like you see it happening in slow motion. But my husband and I were both outside playing volleyball with her. And as it rolled, you could audibly hear a slapping sound. And it wasn't like there was any limbs or any contact that was creating that. When she rolled her ankle, we heard this slapping noise. And honestly, we weren't sure if it was broke or just a bad sprain, if it was like a ligament snapping that made that sound. So got her inside the house and immediately put ice to it. And I actually ran out and grabbed some of the comfrey leaves and just did a really quick mashup and put it on with the ice pack so that we could get immediate treatment, assessed if she could move it, you know, all of those first aid things that you do when you're not sure if it's been broke or it's sprained. But we couldn't tell the following morning. I still wasn't sure if maybe there was a fracture or not. So I ended up taking her in and we did get x-rays and thankfully it's not broken. It's just a really, really good sprain, if there is such a thing. It's a very bad sprain. How do we, how do we go about that? So today is her first day back at school. We have it wrapped up. She went to school on crutches. But I know from being upright all day, not being able to lay down and have it elevated like she did yesterday, by the time she gets home, she's definitely gonna need to ice it and it's probably gonna be pretty sore. So I wanna make sure that one, I have some of these in reserve so that she can use them while she's home, but also just to have these on the hand because a poultice version of this when it's frozen is gonna be really, really good when you have cases of inflammation. But you can use these just at room temperature or you can put them in the fridge. You don't have to freeze them, but I'm gonna freeze up the excess. So we're gonna take our comfrey leaves here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the stems and the blossoms. Now comfrey is also known as bone knit is another common name that you'll hear for comfrey. And that's because it's known historically as being an incredible healer. So using comfrey for broken bones or sprains, strains, bruises, um, it can help with pain and inflammation. It can also help with the skeletal system, which is why it's been known for bone knit. However, comfrey is something that you primarily should only be using externally and not if you have a really large open wound. And part of for that is if when you have a really deep wound, our wounds actually heal from the inside out. So as that wound is healing, if there's any type of infection or pus or anything that needs to be moved out, it can get out and then the very last part, obviously whenever you have, I cut my thumb a couple of weeks ago, and the surface is the very, very last thing to heal. 
Well, the reason that you don't want to use comfrey on a deep wound like that is because it promotes healing so fast. It can actually have that top layer of a wound heal faster than it should. And then it can create an abscess situation because it's healed over on top before the deep part of the wound can actually heal and keep up with that. So not recommended to use on deep wounds. And you also don't wanna use it internally. Now, historically, you'll see different uses of where comfrey may have been used internally, but we know now that it actually has a alkaloid. It's one of the PA alkaloids and that in high doses can cause liver damage. Now, Tylenol or acetaminophen can also cause liver damage and in fact causes lots of liver damage all throughout the U.S. So it's just knowing how to appropriately use something. Um, you don't see nearly as much issues with comfrey as we do with Tylenol, but proceed with caution and don't be using it internally. So I'm going to put this into the blender here and then I've got about 12 probably 12 to 14 leaves, some larger than others, obviously in the blossoms and stems. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of water to this. And then we're going to get this blended up into a rough puree. Now this is still gonna be pretty runny. So this is where we're gonna add in a binder. You can add, if you have something like bentonite clay um, or arrowroot powder, different things like that, you can add that in. You can also just use regular flour. So I have got some flour here and I'm just gonna do about a quarter cup or four tablespoons of flour. And this is just to help make this more as a paste and thick. So this is just a thickening agent. There we go. It almost looks like a soup, right? Okay, so now you've got several different options for actually creating your poultice. If you have a 100% cotton sock, you could actually put this poultice down into the sock and then use that and put it on the skin as a wound, or you can use gauze. So here I just have some of the, these are a three by three inch gauze and I've separated them out. And this is the portion that I'm gonna actually put against the skin. You can see that this, this has uh, more weave and there's gonna be more availability for this to seep through and have skin to skin contact. And then this part is gonna go on top of it. So I am just going to spoon out some of my comfrey poultice paste here. And then I need this to go over the top and then around and down the side of her ankle. So I'm gonna be putting, spreading this out into kind of a larger area just because I know the size of the bruise and where she has a lot of swelling on her ankle. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put this right on top. And then I'm gonna put this into the freezer. You could put this simply into the fridge. You could use this just at room temperature too. Of course, when you combine the comfrey with it being cold, especially if you have a lot of inflammation and pain, it's gonna do double duty to help reduce that inflammation as well as the pain. And my daughter has Von Willebrand's disease, which is a blood clotting disorder. So when it comes to uh, pain management or anti-inflammatories or anything like that, the only thing that she can take over the counter is Tylenol. And honestly, I feel like Tylenol, at least for me, is basically like a placebo and not a good one at that. It doesn't do anything for me as far as pain management wise. I don't even bother ever taking Tylenol, but it is the only thing that I can give her as far as over the counter uh, medicine, but it doesn't seem to be very effective though. I did give her some when she did it the night she did this cause it hurt so much. But once we were able to add the comfrey compress, it was pretty amazing because when she first did it, um, her bruising was very apparent. It was like immediately you saw purple rising on the top of her ankle. And with someone who has a blood clotting disorder, they bruise very easily anyways. And so we put the comfrey compress on and then I wrapped it in an ACE bandage and actually left it on overnight. And it was amazing because the next morning there was very little surface bruising compared to the night before. So pretty incredible. Of course, I don't have a way of doing like where I only wrapped part of it to truly see like what would part of it look like without 
um, but it was pretty impressive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, I think one more of these. Now you could use something like cheesecloth or muslin if you didn't have the little sterile bandages here, or you didn't wanna use these and just wash them out, rinse them out in between uses. As I said, you could definitely use the sock. And if you don't have comfrey, you might not have comfrey growing, you can use dried comfrey. So I will link to beneath this video, my favorite source for herbs if it's not something that I'm growing myself. And so if you were gonna use dried herbs, dried herbs of course are more concentrated, right? Um, anything that's dried is more in a concentration. So you actually use, use less of the dried herb than you do when you are using fresh. So kind of the rule of thumb is, and we ha will have this in a printed version on the website, so you'll be able to go and print out the exact uh, measurements for both fresh and dried to make the poultice here. Um, but usually if a recipe is calling for dried herbs and you're gonna use fresh, you're gonna double or triple because you can guesstimate that that's about the concentration in dried. So if you're buying dried comfrey, you'll actually be using less than you would be as we are here with this fresh version. So these, I am just going to flash freeze in the freezer. And then once these are frozen, you can put them in a Ziploc bag um, and then just pull them out as needed and have them on hand as an ice pack. Or you could put them in the fridge. If you're gonna put them in the fridge without being uh, flash frozen so they don't stick together, you're gonna wanna put uh, like wax paper between them. Um, if you want to stack them on top of each other and just keep them in the fridge. But of course, in the freezer is going to keep them the longest. And then this last one, I'm going to go ahead and put into, it is clean, I promise, but it is a well-used sock. Um, we're going to go ahead and put into the sock. And this one I'm just going to throw into the fridge so that she can use it as soon as she gets home from school. So to use the comfrey poultice here. It's something you're going to want to apply for a minimum of at least 10 minutes and then ideally being able to leave it on for several hours and then applying it about three times a day and then you can graduate that down obviously as it begins to heal. And because I'm going to get a little bit of moisture of this out, you can see there where that's starting to seep through which is just fine. And I'm gonna kind of even that out so I have a larger surface area. And then I'm just gonna stick this in here just so it doesn't drip. And this will go directly into the fridge so that she can use this as soon as she gets home. Apply the poultice just like you would an ice pack. Have a towel nearby because as this starts to thaw, you will get the comfrey juices and we want them directly on the skin, on the area that has been injured, but you don't want them to also leak all over any type of bedding. Also make sure to go to melissaknorris.com forward slash mini herb if you want to join our summer free herb series. So this is just one of the ways to use comfrey. You can also make a compress with it or infuse it into oil to make a topical salve or ointment. And if you want to have more herbal remedies on hand, I actually have one of my favorite wound healing salve recipes on the website. We'll link to that below. You can go and check that out. And if you're interested in learning how to use more herbs medicinally, I'm going to be doing a deep dive class on that this fall. So keep your eye out on the channel or if you're on my newsletter, I will send more information about that out as we get a little bit closer.